This video will cover how to uh, do the tag export feature inside the banner safety controller software to a Rockwell Studio 5000 uh, pet setup. Here I have a simple XS26 project already created. If we go to functional view, we can see that I have an ISD chain, which is an in-series diagnostic that allows us to have up to 32 uh, ISD compliant devices, such as gate switches or e-stops, uh, chained into one safety input connection into, into the safety controller. Uh, and that is going to safety output one. I also have a VON1, which is a virtual on that would be coming from the PLC into the XS26 that is controlling safety output two. In both cases, they're not really true safety circuits. Uh, I guess the, the ISD still is, it's just, um, I'm not sure what rating it is, uh, but the other one, since it's just the PLC turning something on and off, that's not a true safety connection. Uh, but it allows us to kind of show the back and, back and forth capabilities of control uh, between the two. Um, so what, uh, what we do here is we basically do our entire um, safety program if possible and once that's done we download it into the controller um, uh, so we do I'm doing everything via Ethernet uh, I'm already connected so if we weren't connected uh, you just uh, you'd find the various devices in the system that are banner safety controllers that it can find and you just hit connect when you're doing it via network and we're connected and so then we just um, uh, you know, now that we're connected, we just need to do one final step, and that is actually configure what data is going to be passed back and forth between the XS26 and the PLC. And as long as the project is all done, you just can hit auto configure, and it'll auto put in all of the devices inside of this right here. Um, how you can kind of see how things work. So, if we're interested in safety output one, which is this track MOSO1, that tells us that in the in the Rockwell. Uh, input assembly instances that's going to be word zero bit three uh, that's going to go on and off to basically track the status of safety output one there's a lot of information you can you can have here and it basically tells you where it all is like uh, if you want to know if uh, that connection is faulted that's word four bit three uh, so on and so forth for all this information uh, if you want more information on what all this what all these various titles do you can look in the banner safety controller manual uh, to, to, to find that information. So once that's done, uh, we just uh, save this and we'll download it. Um, if you haven't downloaded the network settings, you'd want to do that first. I've already done that. So you go over to this network settings and hit send and that'll actually place the network settings in there. You kind of have to do that ahead of time if you're going to do a network connection. So I've already done that. And so I'm going to actually write the configuration of the controller now. And with a network uh, connection, you need to um, have a password associated with it, so it just won't accept any commands. Oops, I typed in the wrong one. So let's try that again. It is case sensitive, so I probably did that. Okay. And what I kind of skipped there was uh, it's asking you to kind of look through <clears throat> all the safety uh, setup stuff and confirm that it is correct. Um, I have a very simple one, so I just kind of looked at it real quick. Uh, it is an example. If this was a real application, you want to double check that everything is correct in there. Or just hitting OK. It is finished. So now uh, we do need to do a restart. Um, so after the restart, I will lose connection to the um, XS26. So your PLC, if it's connect was had the connection set up, would lose it. Uh, also, the safety software loses connection until it's rebooted. <clears throat> you know that a process is done is when the connect button comes back. So I can hit connect here and I am reconnected. I am going to go into live mode. So just to make sure things are kind of working before we go to the PLC portion of it. Um, so right here, 
you can kind of see as I change the uh, ISD connection, it goes on and off. That looks good. I'll go offline here. Um, so the final step before we can is to actually create the export uh, tag name or file. So we go to Industrial Ethernet and press export. Uh, one thing to kind of cover is if if you change the project and add more items to it, uh, the list here may change over time. So uh, sometimes you'll probably want to come in, like if you change something, maybe it's just best to manually add it. So you press the plus button here and do like a track input and then find the new input that you placed in there to track it. Or if there's another feature uh, that all populates in here. Um, if you can't find the feature, just contact Banner Engineering and ask to speak to one of the safety specialists. They can kind of point you to which one is, is correct. There are a lot of options available there to, to select. But that, that ensures that the, the data doesn't get out of order on you uh, after you've like created, like say, like maybe you created your project, but now you're adding a couple new things and you don't want the rest of the data to get out of order because you've already programmed in the Rockwell. I would just add, manually add the couple things that you added to it and then just press the export after that. So I will press export. I need to set the name uh, here. So this is either the name of the EDS connection you've already created or this is the name of the connection that, sh that, the, uh, that an L5X for this tag export would auto generate for you if you don't have the connection already created. I'm going to call it XS26 and there's really two uh, connections to, uh, selections that you can do. You can do this eight ISD chains or the other option is the VI reset cancel delay. So if you're not using ISD chains on an XS26, you want to use the VI reset cancel delay because uh, that has the most complete um, option set available. Uh, if you do have ISD chains in your system, uh, select the eight ISD chains. Now that does use more memory, um, but uh, it, is, it is the most complete ISD uh, setup possible. So I have ISD chains in my system so I will be selecting the eight ISD chains and I'll hit export. So this is what it'll be called and it'll add basically eight ISD chains to it. So I just hit save. I'd had a previous version when I was testing it if, if you, might, you may have noticed that or not. Uh, but if we go to our desktop now, you'll see two files here. There is uh, this comma separated one. That is that is the one you'd use for doing imports uh, if you already created an ESD connection uh, for the safety controller. Uh, if you want to do the full import of everything all at once, there's an L5X, um, which is the Allen Bradley um, standard for imports uh, for various things. And you'll notice the name is Ethernet Assemblies Data. That's what was set up uh, when we save the files. And it also appends the, the, the connection type that you did. So here's eight ISD chains. So now we can go into our Rockwell environment. I just have a, a, a project set up with just the PLC in it. If we go down to Ethernet, there's nothing there. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the uh, import module. And this is where that L5X will come into play. So I'll just select that, hit open. And hit OK. That will import everything into the system. So you'll create the connection and it'll basically import all the tags. So if we scroll down here a little, you can actually see now the module is now present in the controller organizer area. And if we go to controller tags, You'll get the configuration, input, and output assemblies generated. We don't have any configuration items, so really only the input and output assembly instances are valid for us. So we open up the input and data, and so like here's word zero. So word zero bit uh, six is track, is basically track V on one. If we go back to the XS26 software and we look at track, um, Sorry, track uh, V on one, that's word zero, bit six. So everything is linked up correctly, just the way we want it. And there's, you'll notice that there's that extra one in there for I have the ISD in there twice. That's when I was manually adding it. You can add it in twice, but uh, 
for most intents and purposes, that just uh, wastes a, a bit of memory, or, or you know, uh, that could be associated with something else. In this case, since there's not much in there, it's not a big deal. Um, so we can actually download this project into it, so we can see the live data. Okay, after pressing the yes there, we're now we're in live mode. You can see that the ISD is on right now. So if I change the status of the chain, like say open the gate switch, so here the gate switch is open. Uh, you can see the bit went to zero for that and also the track M uh, safety output one turned off. So if I, if I re-enable the gate switch, they both go back on. So they are fully tracking right now. Um, also, if we scroll down to the, to the uh, Inputs. So here is the outputs assemblies, <coughs> the output assemblies, and we expand that, and we open up data zero or word zero for that. There's the V on one here. So if I turn that on, and then go back to the status, you can also see the SO two is now on, and V on V O V V on one is also on. So you can see this is tracking uh, all of the data. Uh, for the connection, so the tag export feature worked just perfectly. At this point, you basically take uh, the inputs and outputs and then put them into your um, ladder logic uh, as needed and then do the various operational tasks uh, required for the system. So there's probably areas where you want to make sure that your safety outputs are on. Um, it's basically telling you that the safety circuit is complete so that you can do uh, various logic in the PLC. If there's any questions, please contact Banner Engineering and uh, we'll get you in touch with a safety specialist uh, to go over any of your questions. Thank you.